6466 Quebec, Dex approach. Pilot number 3008. Let me know when you have Delta, Craig, landing runway 23. So the diamond is our ground track, and the arrow is where we want to go. So 5101, clear visual approach, runway 29, contact gains with our. An important concept that really helps understand navigation when it comes to IFR and like which way to point the airplane is understanding when to fly a heading and when to fly a track. Number 66 Quebec, we're affirmative, all the black and mode associated with carriers are cold. And there are 5101, 40 field tight. I'm just doing like a risk calculation in my head. We're at night, there is IMC right above us. All right, number 80901, that's uh, decision time. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor who loves the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I make it my mission to promote safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to Climb Into the Cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Chelsea and I have flown November 80991 to Daytona Beach to get a PowerFlow exhaust installed at the PowerFlow Systems headquarters. We posted a comprehensive video covering the install, including before and after flights to compare the data, and the difference that a tuned exhaust makes is actually pretty impressive. A link to that video is down in the description. We've spent a week with Cameron and his family in Central Florida, and now that the Skyhawk has better engine performance and more fuel efficiency, it's time for Chelsea and I to depart Orlando Apopka Airport and pick up our IFR to Pensacola to meet up with CoFlight. And this will be a perfect flight to immerse Chelsea in the real world of IFR flying. Power flow is not far from me. I used to live in Daytona, uh, moved out this way into Central Florida, so Josh came over for a little visit. We all took the boat out. My plane is currently an annual, so he gets to have my spot free of charge. And uh, now it's off to the next adventure for Josh. So Chelsea over here. <laughs> She'll be in the left seat for this flight. You're working on your instrument rating. Mm -hmm. Not quite finished up yet. Quite. So we're gonna knock some rust off today. Um, and we'll take advantage of the fact that there'll be a double eye in the plane. At least I act like I'm one. Do I have you convinced? Mm, we'll see when we land. Don't look me up. But she's going to hop in the left seat of the plane, and uh, we're going to go IFR from Apopka to Pensacola, Florida. Apopka is just outside of Orlando. So it's a bluebird day, blue skies with very high cirrus clouds. We don't have to worry about any sort of weather along the way. We've checked multiple times. Pensacola looks beautiful, and everything in between is unrestricted ceilings. But we're going to file IFR anyways just to give her some practice mm -hmm. picking up a clearance operating in the IFR environment. It should be a good day to practice that stuff because it's not going to be very much stress. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pull the plane out of the hangar here in Apopka, and then Cameron is going to have the awesome task of putting the, the Corvallis back in by himself. I'm excited for it. Yes. Um, and then we'll taxi over to the fuel pump, get some gas, and then we'll be out of here. We'll pick up the IFR clearance in the air. Uh, we're going to depart VFR out of a pop. We're not going to bother calling on the phone to get a clearance or anything like that. We're going to take off and go out over the over Apalachicola Bay, but we're going to go through an intersection that keeps us closer to land so we don't have to bother with life vests. But beyond that, the plane's ready, cameras are ready, everything's good to go, and we'll be out of here. Should be a great day to fly. Apopka. Apopka traffic Cessna 809991 departing runway 15 Apopka. Final check on final. All right, so yeah, you could just, you see that the yeah. yellow line with chevrons? Yep. We technically can't start our takeoff roll until we're past that. Okay. You could just like do a fast taxi and then Seat belts. Yep, I'm strapped in. Mixture master mags. I'm popping traffic, Navajo 325, Fox Drop, and taking position. Right. Ready? There you go. Yep. We're full power, we got a good rise on the RPMs there in the green, they look good. Our airspeed is alive, and there is. And we're off. Climbing good. And then pitch for 78.
Apopka traffic 809901, departing the pattern from the right downwind, Apopka. Orlando approach, Cessna 809901. Cessna 809901, Orlando. 809901, 3300, we are climbing away from Apopka, would like to pick up our IFR flight plan. That's cool. Uh, you might ask for that. 809901, Roger, maintain VFR, squawk. Five 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 one. Eight zero nine nine one. Remaining VFR squawking. Five 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 one. Perfect. I'm gonna start coming off with the power a little bit. Eight zero nine nine one. Uh, clear to Pensacola. Uh, via. Let's see. Fire present heading. And then, uh, as filed, maintain four thousand. Eight zero nine nine one. Flying present heading. Um, then as filed. Then as filed, direct to Pensacola. Okay, zero nine one. Expect. Uh, I think you had A D D A X as a fix, and then Pensacola. Expect that. That sounds good. We'll uh, maintain present heading. Then as filed, and uh, climb maintain four thousand eight zero nine nine one. Thanks. An important topic or an, an important concept that r I find, at least for me, really helps understand navigation when it comes to IFR and like which way to point the airplane is understanding when to fly a heading and when to fly a track. Okay. Do you know the, Do you know what I mean by that? It's so like right now you're flying a heading. Yeah. You're focusing on that number at the top of the heading indicator. Because they gave us that. Because they gave us that. With and they already know the wind, so the they're dealing with all of that. Approach, they're guessing, but yeah. Orlando, 35-3, see ya. So yeah, they're already compensating for the wind. Um, so really, they need us to go to about a three two zero. But they're steering us 300 zero zero because they know the wind is going to push us that way. Or one, and uh, just to verify, you're on course, correct? Negative. Negative 991. 991, Roger. Uh, proceed direct attic. 991, direct attic. Thank you. Now, you, now we want to fly a track. Okay. We're no longer, longer flying a heading. So your desired track is the top of the arrow. One, eight. Which I mean is 310 is our desired track. Okay. Our track is 317, which is the um, the diamond. There you go. So yeah, we need to come left a little bit. Do you see why? Yeah. Because we're crabbing. And we want to put our ground track right on the desired track. Remember, 809991, contact Jack Center, 127.8. Good day. 127.8, 9901. You want to take some time now to study the approach plate? Yeah. For the ILS 17. Do you want me to do it on here on my phone? Uh, you can do it on there. Okay. Um, I can take the controls while you're doing that your since controls. you're going to be heads down. I have yeah. flight controls. So the first thing I'd look at is ILS or localizer runway 17 at Pensacola. So this is the correct airport and the correct approach. I don't see any red warning labels on the sides, which for flight would let me know if it's expired. And of course, the date's correct. So starting in the top left-hand corner, I see a VHF navigation frequency, which tells me that we're going to need to be on green needles. That'll need to say VLOC, and we need a green okay. needle right there. That's called the $500 button because it causes you to lose or fail a check ride if you don't switch it. If I were to shoot the ILS with magenta needles, technically I'm following the GPS signal. Yeah. That's not legal. You have to follow the localizer signal. Ah. Um, go ahead and load the approach. So hit procedure. Select approach. Enter. Uh huh. And ILS it's it's already got Pensacola selected. Uh huh. So ILS 17. Enter. Let me inspect the visual approach on way one six. Here's a so Sileb is an initial approach fix. So you could say vectors. But what if we get closer and then he says, I changed my mind. I'm too busy to vector you, proceed direct side lab, execute the procedure turn. Do we just want to go ahead and have that in and then we'll deviate and We can activate vectors to final later. It's literally like one keystroke to activate it. It's easier it. to go from the approach fix to vectors rather than vectors. Right. So just go ahead and load it, Okay. just in case we need it. And then when we get closer and we're like reasonably sure that he's going to vector us, then we can go activate vectors to okay. final. So use the big knob and scroll down until you see Scilab. And also, closer, you see yeah. that it also auto slewed the HSI to runway heading? Yeah. So that's already done for us. We obviously cannot get the ILS as far out, uh -huh. and we can't hear it. Yeah. The other thing I want to do is put in 
111.1. And for standby? For this one. Air shuttle 635, contact Jack, position of 12. So it'll be two radios that we need to identify when it's time. I'm still on the first box. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got 111.1 .1 loaded in there, and we'll identify it when the time is appropriate. When we see the needles moving, we can probably hear the Morse code. 169 is going to be our inbound approach course. This is going to auto slew it for us, which we already saw. We're going to go ahead and set this one just for situational awareness. It doesn't okay. do anything. Yeah. Um, we've got a 7,000 foot runway, and we're going to be touching down about 100 feet, 120 feet above sea level. Triangle with a T means we've got non-standard takeoff minimums, and the triangle with an A means non-standard alternate minimums. Uh -huh. We'll expect to see the Mauser lighting when we pop out. Uh -huh. That's what it'll look like. Looking, okay, so the missed approach is going to be climbed to 600 and a climbing right turn to 3000, direct to the November uniform, November VOR, and hold. Continue the climb and the hold up to 3000 feet if we need to. ATIS 121.25. And we'll know that we're picking that up when we start to see the RX blinking in and out. Yeah. Um, Pensacola approach will be 19-0. will be tower. We'll handle that when we get closer. We can handle ground point nine or when we're off the runway. So we're planning to be vectored for final, which will be vectored out or above 1,700 feet uh -huh. outside of Brent, which is, in this case, the initial approach fix, and it's also the final approach fix. But if we're vectored, we're only going to use it as the final approach fix. Do you know why? It's not depicted super candidly and there were on this approach, and approach. but the reason Brent is an initial approach fix as well as a final approach fix is because anyway, traffic, uh, if they were to tell us proceed direct Brent miles. for the full procedure approach, uh, we would cross Brent and go and outbound, and outbound. Uh, procedure uh, turn, back and cross Brent again inbound. Yeah. Initial approach fix, final approach fix. Yeah. That's why it's there twice. And then that's why there's a separate altitude at or above 1,800. And then 17. And then when you're established inbound, you can go down to at or above 1,700 yeah, until you cross Brent. Okay, so we're going to get vectored for final outside of Brent at or above 1,700 feet. If we're cleared for the approach above 1,700 feet. So if they're vectoring us, we... I mean, they're going to give us altitudes. Yeah. But 3436, is 11 and, uh, until we're on the inbound course, we're not allowed to be below 1,800. Right. Continue to live it. Correct. Okay. So the outer above 1,800 feet is for your outbound procedure leg turn. and procedure okay. turn. Okay. Once you're finished with the procedure turn and you're established, like on lined up on the inbound uh, leg, then you can, can go down that. Down. You can wrong. start to go down to outer above 17. Okay. Then you'll intercept the yeah, final approach fix at 17. Yeah. Yeah. And then start your descent. And then start the descent. I might intercept the glide slope above 1700 further out. Yeah. So if we're like at 2000 and they say maintain 2000 or uh, fly heading 190, maintain 2000 until established, cleared for the ILS 17. We can stay at, or they want us to stay at 2000 until we're established on the approach. A good way to, I just say, when I, whenever I'm within like half scale deflection, I'm established. Yeah. So once you're established, then you can, uh, you can descend down to your prescribed altitude here. What I normally do is I stay up there. If I'm at like 2000 and I intercept the localizer at 2000 feet, I'm just going to stay at 2,000 until the glide slope meets me. Then I'll start my descent. Yeah. And, I sh and if I'm on glide slope, I should be crossing Brent at 1,700 feet, right on glide slope. Yeah, then they're going to give you an altitude, and that's going to be the altitude they want you to maintain until established. Then a clearance. Cleared for the ILS-17 Pensacola. But if you just remember that, PTAC, P-T-A-C, that's generally what an approach clearance may sound like. More often than not, you're going to get less than all four. Okay. You might just get a, uh, an altitude and a clearance. When they say cleared for the approach, they're basically telling you, I'm giving you permission to execute the instructions on your approach plate at your discretion. Yeah. You know, per what the, the instructions say. Up until that point, you're under the, the instruction of air traffic control. So, 
If you get the full PTAC, PTAC, it would sound something like 8099 or one year three miles from the final approach fix. Turn right or turn left heading 190. Maintain 2000 until established. Cleared for the ILS 17. And what would you read back? I'd reply with 190 2000 till established. Cleared for the ILS 9901. While turning left to 190. As soon as they give me that heading. You should have already been kind of expecting that that was going to happen. So your hand should already snap up here, roll the heading bug as you're rolling into the turn. Because if you wait too long, you're going to blow through the localizer. Okay. Because they're basically getting you real close, and they're actually not allowed to let you intercept at more than 30 degrees. Yeah. So they're trying to get you, like inch you as close as possible and, and then tell you to make that turn so it's as shallow as possible for you. Dog 1, uh, sorry, 8-1, your handoff is currently in progress. Verify your 2-ship. Hey, affirm, Red Dog 8-1. Red Dog 8-1. We're gonna go to IMC here. Red Dog 8-1, uh, I then verify spot 3441, uh, sorry, 3444. Red Dog 8-1, slash, spot Gate one, radar contact, uh, one mile south of Herbert, you can proceed direct, you're working your Do you want to do the approach or do you just want to go straight to the airport? I want one of us to do the approach. Okay. I'm just saying we're probably not going to need to do the approach for weather. Yeah. But you do want to see the approach done. At least, yeah. Okay, alright. Well, you can do it, I mean... This, it'll be a good way to get your foot back in the door. Yeah. Pensacola approach, November 80991, strike Bari 4000. Bari 0991, Pensacola approach, good evening, Pensacola 2990, verify information, Foxtrot, set vectors for the ILS from 17. 2990, we will get information and uh, we would like the ILS 17. 8991, expected. Okay, so he told us to expect the ILS 17, so at this okay. point, I'd and be vectors. going in and yeah. vectors, I'd be going into like procedure, select approach, and I'd load it. Okay, so but we did that back there just for practice? We already did it. But you would be doing this now? That's when I'd be doing okay. it. Is when they tell me to expect an approach, that's when I would, first thing, is load it. Second thing is pull up the approach plate. Number eight zero nine nine one. Uh, you may be able to get the visual. It's been in and out. It's kind of hard to get from the north, but from the south, it might probably get a little better. Uh, I'll keep you on that heading, uh, going all the way down as low as I can get you 1,700 feet. If you get the visual, let me know. If not, I'll put you on the downwind for the ILS from a 17. Yeah, we'd like to just go ahead and take the ILS. We're doing some training here, 991. Okay, sounds good. No raise there, 991. Uh, just stay on that heading, man, and I'll try to get you in. That's uh, an eight, nine mile final, but uh, I got to see. It might be out of traffic. Okay, we'll, we'll hold the 270 heading for now, 991. November 809991, Pensacola. 991. If you really want the ILS Ray 17, if you don't have the airpoint side, I can give it to you. You may have to go out there and hold, though. Um. 809991, uh, we can just go ahead and take the visual, but we are still kind of in and out of IMC right here at 2000. Just need to get a little lower. Okay, uh, let me know when you get to 17, and we'll see if you get it then. 991, thanks. I have 85, just had to maintain 6. That's kind of where I draw the line. I don't really want to hold. That's fine, dude. 200 to go. Okay. I'm just doing like a risk calculation in my head. We're at night. There is IMC right above us. All right, number 809901, that's uh, decision time. ILS, or do you want to go out for, uh, you want to go in for the We visual? just got the airport site. We got the airport site, 909901. 809901, cleared visual approach from my 17, contact tower, 119.9er. 119.9er, cleared, uh, or 9901, sorry. 1199er? Yep. So we do have the ILS queued up. We never identified it because we didn't really get to that point. So we are lined up with the correct runway. We see a 170 on the compass and all that kind of stuff. So we, it makes sense. Yeah. 500. Stabilized. Yeah, we look great on the speed. Yeah. I see white over white and we are above the glide slope, which I don't mind at night. Yeah. I feel good about it right now. Yeah. Got a lot of We have 7,000 feet. Big, big runway. 7,001, right? 
Yeah, that extra foot matters. Oh, it's like yeah. bonus fries. Uh huh. The bottom of the bag. Is landing light on? Yep. You're lit up. Yep. We have the runway. Freaking butter. <laughs> Nine nine one, continue down the taxiway Delta, turn left at Delta and say parking. In. Left at Delta and we are going to the... We're going to Ennis Free, 991. Sorry, Roger, left turn at Delta to the ramp, this frequency. We'll stay with you, 991, Delta to the ramp. Alright, you, have... you see the T? Yeah. Also trying to watch those ropes. Yeah, you're in between them, you're good. At the time this was filmed, Chelsea and I were working on finishing up her instrument training, and she has since taken and passed her instrument checkride. IFR flying takes a lot of consideration on all fronts, weather, fuel, logistics, all of it. And I honestly don't think there's a better way to learn about all of those considerations than to take a real-world cross-country trip with your instructor using the IFR system. In the next video from this trip, we meet up with CoFlight and fly up what's called the Mississippi Blues Trail. And we actually flew a good part of that trail in formation with CoFlight's Baron. And despite the Baron being a way more powerful and faster airplane than the Skyhawk, we were actually able to keep it pretty tight, and we got some amazing footage of that formation. We followed the Mississippi River up to Memphis, and we stopped at some key historical markers showing where blues music got its start. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that upcoming content. The full-length video of this flight to Pensacola will also be on Cockpit Club if you'd like to see all of the technical procedures. The link to Cockpit Club is down in the description as well. Until next time, you know the drill. Stay happy, healthy, current, and most importantly, stay proficient. We'll see you in the next one. Fly safe.